What is up guys? Welcome back to part 4 of this uh, Volvo project. In this video we're going to be changing out the springs to these uh, lowering springs that I got here. Uh, and the main reason for that is because the suspension is super spongy right now. Uh, the stock suspension on these old Volvos are really, really soft. And a set of uh, harder lower springs makes uh, a ton of difference, actually. Um, so I, di I did not want to go the route of coilovers because that's a little bit uh, above budget for this build. It, I mean, it is a budget build, uh, so let's keep it that way. And I'm also going to be replacing a ball joint and uh, go over some uh, rust proofing just uh, briefly. So uh, let's get started. So as we can see here, uh, the rear springs are held in place by a nut there on the top mount, which uh, goes to the body of the car. And I actually soaked them down uh, with some penetrating fluid as well as uh, automatic transmission fluid actually uh, so that it wouldn't evaporate. Uh, I did that a couple of days beforehand so that they would have time to soak in and uh, dissolve the rust uh, or penetrate the rust I should say. They actually came out uh, relatively easy despite the fact they were super rusty. Then it's time to compress the springs with the two spring compressors. And when I've done that, I remove that top nut completely. And then it's just a matter of re removing the spring. And underneath this uh, rubber mount here, there's a lot of dirt and um, rust flakes, and whatever, so I just um, vacuumed all of that up and brushed up the remains. Just clean that up. Here you can see me pretty much uh, prying off the rust from the old mounts. I'm just scraping that off. I'm gonna be applying some um, rust proofing to it as well. This is uh, pretty much how you remount the new spring with uh, the old parts there. Just make sure that they're properly seated, both at the top and the bottom. The end of the spring is supposed to be seated to the right position on uh, the bottom and the top seats. There was some surface rust starting to form there on the frame of the car, or the spring mounts. So I just cleaned that up really quick and uh, applied some uh, body spray or rust proofing to that area. Then I need to compress the springs once again, just a little bit, in order to get them on. The reason why I didn't uh, just remove the shocks is because, uh, well, they're pretty rusty, the fasteners for the shocks are pretty rusty and uh, it's always a struggle when you're dealing with an old rusty car like this. So the fewer bolts I have to undo, the happier I am. And uh, this method works really fine, it doesn't take uh, a lot of time at all. And I did the exact same process on the other side, uh, except for that um, 
the nut came with the pin bolt right there as you saw so I just replaced it with an M10 bolt and that's the rear done so let's begin with the front springs now so I need to remove the brake caliper and the caliper holder you can actually remove it as a one unit you don't have to remove the caliper first and then the caliper holder you can just go ahead and remove everything brake disc then I need to undo the tie rod so I soak it with some penetrating fluid brush off the loose rust and then I actually heat the nut because this one was rather stubborn And an impact gun is really your friend here, if you have access to one, I would strongly recommend it. The thing was that uh, it was just spinning with the whole assembly, uh, with the bolt inside of the tie rod, so I need to clamp it together and uh, then I can remove it uh, using that method. And then I move on with uh, removing the ball joint here. So I heat the area, I heat up the area around um, the two bolts that holds it on to the strut. And I can tell you that these were on pretty tight, so heat is really your friend here. Honestly, I might have snapped the bolts if I didn't use heat. Uh, so definitely use a torch or something like that if you have access to one. And then the anti-roll bar link. And then I just pry on the control arm until the strut pops off the uh, ball joint there. Then you remove these uh, two 17 millimeter nuts on top of the strut. Now preferably you should be two persons doing this but it's uh, manageable if you're alone as well. And here you can actually hear the play in the ball joint. Definitely in need of replacement. Then I uh, compress the spring here on the strut. Enough to where I can uh, remove that big top nut there and even though I compressed them a lot you could see you could see that there was still some uh, potential energy left this bearing was a little bit gritty uh, but I have definitely seen worse, so I'm not going to replace it. There were still some grease in it. You can actually disassemble it and repack it with grease if you want to, but uh, it was actually pretty smooth. Uh, a little bit gritty, as I said, but it'll definitely hold for a couple of more years. And then just decompress the spring, remove it, along with all the parts. And then I remove all the surface rust on uh, the strut here, where the spring mounts. And 
and also applying a bit of rust proofing spray. And then it's just a matter of refitting the new spring in reverse order. And because this one is a little bit shorter, you actually don't need to compress the spring as much as you needed to compress uh, the old spring. But you still need, it, need to compress it a little bit in order to get uh, that big top nut on. And just screw it on by hand first. And then I go ahead and remove the spring compressors. And then just torque down the top nut there with the impact gun on uh, the medium setting. This is how the spring should be seated. Now this brake shield was just crumbling to pieces so I decided to just cut it off completely because it wasn't doing any use there. And I actually went ahead and bought a new ball joint the very same day. Uh, they had one in stock in the store so I just uh, went ahead and bought one the very same day because I just wanted to finish everything up. And obviously you just refit everything in uh, the reverse order. Put some Loctite on the bolts because the factory bolts had Loctite on them so I'm applying Loctite to these as well.
It's always funny because whenever I work on this car, there's a big pile of uh, rust flakes and dirt and whatever on the ground that I need to clean up. So there we go. I've uh, finished up changing the springs in all four corners. This is also a weld patch I did earlier off camera. And on the other side. So hopefully it will be a little bit more controllable when uh, I'm uh, sliding around this winter and more enjoyable to drive. So I put on the winter tires instead of the summer tires because it's, uh, well, it's pretty much winter time by now. Uh, the snow can come anytime now. So yeah, I put on the winter tires, these ugly uh, steel winter tires that I uh, that was included with the car. They're pretty worn out. Um, the studs are gone. There's some thread left. So I mean, they will work uh, for now at least. I cleaned them up a little bit. You can see the rubber is a little bit cleaner now. They were super filthy before. Uh, so. Anyways, let's uh, put it on the ground and see if it has gotten any lower and uh, go out for a test drive. Oh yeah, one more funny thing. Uh, the previous owner mismarked uh, these wheels, it seems. Because here you can see it says HB, which stands for Höger Bak in Swedish, which means uh, right rear wheel. Uh, but you can clearly see that the direction rotation is uh, correct here and if you would reverse it and put it in uh, the right rear spot it would be the opposite way uh, so yeah don't always trust the markings on uh, your tires if the if someone previously done it because they might be wrong as we clearly see here <laughs> so yeah well anyways let's get it on the ground now and uh, go for a test ride So yeah, the suspension is uh, definitely firmer. It's more controllable, for sure. Uh, however, these winter tires uh, are absolutely horrible. Uh, they're unbalanced at even low speeds. Uh, so I definitely need to replace them. Um, but uh, yeah, the suspension feels a lot uh, better. That's for sure. And then on to the rust proofing part. This was actually a very lengthy process, I'm sorry I didn't film more, I'm not gonna go very in depth on this one, I just wanted to, you know, work efficiently and uh, prep it for the winter basically. But uh, what I did was uh, removed all of the surface rust, or all, the most of the surface rust that I could, uh, with the various tools, um, uh, an angle grinder with the steel brush attachment, and uh, actually this uh, air hammer worked really, really well, especially for uh, very thick, uh, very flaky rust, the kind of you see right here, works actually really great for that. And then I primed the bare metal, um, and um, coat it with uh, some uh, body coating and here you can see the floor panel that had uh, just rotten through so I welded a new patch of fresh metal right there and I also tried uh, fluid film from I think it's from America I've heard great things about it I tried that on some places as well so I can compare it uh, this was uh, what I primed with on the bare metal the rust stop it's called in Swedish and then I use a uh, low viscosity underspray uh, inside of uh, the frame and the beams. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much how in-depth I'm going to go on the rust proofing. 
so that's it for this episode guys i uh, hope you enjoyed it uh, and uh, yeah see you next time uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, like put in a comment if you would like to uh, that would be great um, until next time have a great one guys bye